Hey gang, and welcome to the Meddling Kids Podcast, a review of all things Scooby-Doo. I'm your sicky boy, Stephen Pappas. <laughs> and I'm completely healthy, Julie Kin. And today we're discussing the second episode of season two, El Deuce. Is that a thing? Um, yes. <laughs> Mystery Mask Mix-Up, which unfortunately is not about Mexican wrestling. I was really hoping it was. Oh my god, a luchador episode. It has to have been... Oh, I just bit my cough drop. By the way, y'all are going to hear a lot of cough drop sounds. Um, yeah, Stephen, what's wrong with you? Why are you all weird I'm sounding? dying. I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's the plague. Is it a ghost? It's, it's, <laughs> yep, the ghost has taken hold of my body, and oh no. I feel like I'm constantly being pushed down by him, because he's a jerk. Um, but I'm back. I'm here. Yeah, it's time to... Talk. Time to talk Scooby. <laughs> yes, we are going to give you all the rundown of the Scooby Doo episode, the Mystery Mask mix up, and then we'll answer a meddling question and stuff like that. I do need to know if there's ever been a luchador episode of Scooby Doo somewhere. So if somebody could just let me know that, I'm sure it's something I could literally search right now. Um, but that sounds like a lot of effort. So if anybody could yeah. just let me know, has there been a Luchador Scooby-Doo episode? Um, I know there's been a wrestling Scooby-Doo crossover with oh, really? the WWE films. Yeah, they did a w- Scooby-Doo WrestleMania mystery. That sounds amazing. It's a movie from 2014, though, so we got quite a ways a to go. <laughs> yeah, for us together, because we are going um, through these sequentially. Okay, well, let's talk about this episode. H- how would you sum up the mystery mask mix up? A little racist. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> more than a little, little so, little so. My yeah. brain's still fried from the sickness. Um, <laughs> yeah, more than a little racist. Uh, kind of a lot racist at parts, but overall, I enjoyed the episode minus my just nagging moral compass. Yeah, I was able to put some of the things aside and just really enjoy this one. Like, for example, the use of the word oriental. That is pretty offensive. But I was trying to think, okay, back in 1969, that probably wouldn't have been that bad. Yeah, it was considered an acceptable term, which there were a lot of terms considered acceptable in 1969 that are definitely not. But yeah, the time it was made, it was considered acceptable. Yeah, so that one I I gave a pass. And, you know, the religious iconography was a little weird, and we'll get into some of that. But, listeners, if anyone can read, I'm guessing this is Cantonese, but I'm not positive. If anyone can read the words in this episode that are on the art and on the hanging lanterns, please let us know what it says. I'm desperate to know. Or if it says anything. Do you think they just, like, made random shapes and tried to pass it off? That's totally possible. Actually. I wouldn't put it past them. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It looked legit to me based on my zero knowledge of reading Chinese. I have absolutely no knowledge of Chinese <laughs> characters. So, Well, why don't we get into the episode? So it starts off not in Mexico, but it looks like perhaps China. We are seeing a kind of traditional perhaps temple with interesting roof structure and a bunch of bats and bats signal danger and mysticism in the Scooby-Doo verse. So we know something's going to happen, but then Mm -hmm. we go inside the temple and it's beautiful. It's really a neat temple um, with a gigantic statue of Buddha. And so this is the first time that we're going to see some religious iconography that is, um, Gets a little mixed up throughout the episode, and I don't know about you, Stephen, I am not an expert in uh, these religions. Are you an expert in Buddhism? Not Buddhism. I had a specialty in Hinduism in college. Oh, good. I will call on you later to weigh in on a very interesting statue we see later. Yes. Uh, Okay, perfect. (laughs) All right. If anything Jewish comes up, though, I'm your lady. Okay, so (laughs) there's a big fire, and then we see this religious leader he's probably like whatever you call a rabbi for a chinese religion uh (laughs) for buddhism priest yeah i mean do you think they're buddhist i don't know they don't really make it clear um, yeah i guess exactly what it is at, at risk of insulting our buddhists or anybody at all or just the concept of buddhism why don't we just assume it's not buddhist but some interesting religion right 
Religion X. But anyway, it seems like a very interesting religion that has a lot of beautiful uh, statues and rituals. And that, well, just how about priest? Should we call him a pastor? Just for for namesake. Sure. He's definitely He's a religious. pastor. Okay, so this pastor, that's like a, I don't know, that doesn't necessarily mean Christian, right? Pastor? I, I don't know. I think uh, it might, but I don't know. We are not religious studies majors. Oh, yeah. Okay. I was a religious well, studies minor. <laughs> um. So, yeah, well, I mean, you were minor. Is Chinese rabbi better? No. Maybe? No. Okay, so anyway. Chinese leader man the, the religious okay the the rabbi the rabbish kind of guy like rabbi ish okay <laughs> the rabbish is um <laughs> this is gonna this episode oh my gosh i'm so sorry okay this rabbish ra- this pastor i'm going with pastor this pastor is pretty is steven's losing it over there i'm so sorry i just think okay. maybe priest would have been a safe way to go because you have buddhist priests you have um also christian priests you have priest is like you have priests in hindu so you have like okay priest is like a all right he's a priest <laughs> i don't know it's just priest sounds more severe to me than pastor okay no? well let's go on with pastor let's go on with pastor okay okay so this pastor <laughs> he's pretty upset because oh my gosh they have this really important mask that's a central part of their religion apparently um i reckon it's kind of like maybe the torah in judaism or just a beautiful thing that they have in their um chinese version of a synagogue and that someone's stolen and they need to find it so he's really upset about this um it, maybe we could well i'll get back to that okay so anyway he turns to uh what do you call like a pastor's helpers um assistant pastor Assistant sure. Pastor. Yeah. Okay. Associate pastors. Uh, thank you. The associate pastors are like, oh, we'll help find it. Sure. And it's not threatening at all. Oh, yeah. No, I wrote down like these guys are awesome. I'm rooting for them. Like I so, like their outfits. Yeah. Their outfits are pretty amazing. They're in these big, long, churchy kind of robes with masks on to protect their identities, I guess. I don't know. They were okay. really cool. In all seriousness, the artists were definitely trying to make everyone look kind of spooky and scary and threatening. But still, if, you know, they had stolen property and they wanted to go get it, no big deal. Okay, so it is the Mask of Zen Tuo that they're looking for. And the um, associate pastors are really cool about it. They're like, yeah, we hear you and we obey. And so they run off. They're dramatic. Yes, there's flames around and stuff, but nothing (laughs) illegal about this. Okay, so meanwhile, the kids are either in China or Chinatown, and again, begging a listener to please translate some of these words, if they are words, Um, and they're at a parade for the Chinese New Year, and we see, like, the traditional dragon, and um, I don't know, did you notice the crowd behind the kids? I did, well, I mean, they were all very stereotypically, like, dressed and drawn, so that was kind of disappointing. (laughs) Yeah, it was. There were a few people in Western suits. I mean, other than the Scooby gang, no one was white. Um, They were all uh, Asian American, presumably Chinese. And most of them, I would say 90% of them were in like traditional um, Asian garb. Um, And so maybe that's normally what happens at a Chinese New Year parade in 1970 San Francisco. But um, not my sense. Oh, and this is definitely in San Francisco. Can we establish oh, that? Yes. No, we, we did not. But I totally, I was going to say, I have a theory on where they are. And it's definitely the San Francisco. I don't know if San Francisco has a Chinatown. They do. Do they? Okay, well, this is definitely San Francisco then. They uh, we, they pass through Fisherman's Wharf, which is a very famous part of San Francisco. And it's very, very hilly. But I'm yes. sorry, I didn't mean to steal your thunder. My dear Gosh, dude. you just jumped ahead. Okay. We're not even <laughs> sorry, there sorry. yet. I'm just so excited to know where they are. I mean, when we can put a pin on the map, that's a big deal. Okay. So anyway, it could be worse, the people behind them, but, you know, still wasn't great. Anyway, Daphne is totally on Valium. Um, she <laughs> sees Scoob. Yeah. She is on some sort of severe muscle relaxer, um, and Valium was pretty common back in those days. So Scooby's hanging out on top of Shaggy's shoulder so he can see a little bit better, but this does not go well because he puts his paws in front of Shaggy's eyes, and they kind of stumble mm-hmm. around near the path of the parade, which would be very dangerous, but they eventually um, – 
land in some trash cans and scare a cat. But Daphne's like, oh, let's see, I wrote it down. Uh, Daphne's like, oh, they're off balance. <laughs> Come on, you see a so dog. So you're suggesting that she is off balance. I'm suggesting Daphne is when it's off balance throughout this episode, in fact. And that's how I'm justified. Because I like Daphne. You know, I don't want to think she's someone who defiles religious artifacts. But I don't know. She definitely plays the role of Switzerland in this episode. And by Switzerland, I don't mean someone who stands back and lets everyone else go warring. I mean someone who profits from Nazi gold. Oh, wow. Ooh, hard stance. <laughs> So to all of our Swiss listeners, um, (laughs) sorry for Julie's really intense call out. Hey, you get back to me about the 1950s and we'll talk. Okay. Anyway, um, so they want to go to a store. Oh, um, and uh, they look around for stuff and Daphne sees a golden mask that this dude is very anxious to sell them immediately, um, which is kind of weird. And... uh, Daphne is like, yeah, it's groovy. So she buys it. And then right afterwards, the associate pastors come into the store and they're like, excuse me, kind sir, we're looking for this artifact that's been stolen. Okay, in truth, it's much more menacing than that. And the dude's like, "Uh, I just sold it to some girl. And they're like, oh, okay, we'll go find her and try to recover it. Since, again, it's a central part of our religion. And since it was stolen, it certainly is our property. So now, Stephen, legal question for you. Well, if, real quick, uh-huh. you're overlooking something. What? That's very crucial to our whole role here as the meddling kids. Okay. Um, so I'm going to need to just hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, this is my breaking news music for oh the day. Oh, my gosh. Do, 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 do. Oh, it's terrible. I don't like it. Hold on. Is this one better? Hold on. Now I'm upset. I don't like this music. Make it go away. <laughs> it doesn't oh God. do that. That's not how it works. No. Well, guys, we're just going to keep listening to this. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, we have breaking news. Okay. What is it? Um, Fred has indeed revealed himself or at least dropped another clue as to him being a serial killer um, on this episode in this moment. That's right. And what so happened? Fred... Um, when they are in the mask shop looking around and he's like, oh, you need to buy this. And Fred uh-huh. was like, I've always kind of preferred clown faces myself. Uh-huh. So now I have a new theory that Fred is not indeed the Zodiac killer, but is John Wayne Gacy. Oh, my goodness. That makes a lot of sense. That plus the manacles that he knows his way around. It would have been a lot cooler if I had better breaking news music. boop a boop boop you can this is this would have been better. No, what enough God, why does all this music <laughs> suck? <laughs> Alright, BBC. We'll, we'll you're just put news. it in post. Alright, I'm upset. I'm so upset. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know what? You should just focus on that for like ten minutes. I I mean I already have been. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, no, I don't care. um, <laughs> yeah, Fred is John Wayne Gacy. My whole bit was ruined by the terrible, <laughs> weird, like, beat version of breaking news music. Um, it's all over, so thank you. It's been a wild ride, and you would have gotten away with it, too, if it weren't for us meddling kids. Have a good week. No, you did great. You're not allowed away. Sorry, you got to stick around. Okay, so I have a legal question for you before you leave. Okay. Okay, so if something is stolen from me, and, like, I don't know gold from nazis and then the nazis try to sell the gold to somebody else and that person buys the gold is or buys my precious art that the nazis have stolen from me who does the art belong to is it the Mm. ultimate buyer or is it still my art i feel like it's still your art i was gonna say this is maybe we need to consult olaf oh my gosh i'll try to get an interview with him if i can and and send it in (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I tried to get him to watch this episode with me. He wasn't having it. And now look, it's a legal mystery. See, Olaf. Jason, I'm talking to you. I'm just using Olaf because you don't like me to use your real name on air. In case you were confused, <laughs> that's who I was talking about. I, you, you've done this bit a million times, and it makes me happy every single time. <laughs> every time. Oh, 
my poor husband. It's hard work being married to me. Okay. The, the dudes, the, um, you know, associate pastors are like, okay, we'll go find that buyer. Anyway, I have written here chop suey malt. And I don't know anything about it, except maybe that's what Shaggy wanted to go get as a snack. Probably. Now, for our best friend, Jis, who's hopefully listening, remember, when they say malt, they're not talking about malt whiskey. They're talking no. about malted milkshakes. Yes, like a malt shop. Right, exactly. Yeah, she thought a malt shop was a whiskey shop. That would be incredible. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> New but Zealand no. is a fun place. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? In America, a malt shop is something very different. Yes. Okay. So they see the associate pastors, and they're really scared. And you, do you remember what they think they are? Yes. Ah. <laughs> uh. Shaggy just goes, oh, no, ghosts, and turns and runs. Why are they always ghosts? They're ghosts not ghosts. Every time. It's go- It's always ghosts. And Vel- So they all hide behind Velma. And Velma's like, what's up? And they say, okay, again, everyone, this isn't actually how it went, but in my reimagining, they're like, excuse me, kind uh, visitors to Chinatown. I think you might have some stolen property that actually belongs to us. How about we all go to the local magistrate or police office and um, po- police den? What do you call where police are? Po- police station. station. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and and we can sort this out. But um, not they, exactly what they say. That's but not exactly what they say. I think they said uh, we want the mask. And Daphne says you can't have it. It belongs to me. And the dudes are like, okay, well, then we'll go through legal action to get it back and restore it to our religious sanctuary. But what they actually said is, we will take it. Um, but, you know, they're men of few words. Maybe they had taken a vow of silence or something, and they could only speak when when really, really important. Anyway, Velmi t- Velma tells Scooby to, like, scare them off as a watchdog, and this doesn't go very well. So then Scooby goes into a laundromat and helpfully labeled Chinese laundry, mm. just in case we didn't understand the race of the people who owned the laundromat, I guess. I don't know. Maybe that was common in 1970. I kind of doubt it. Um and anyway, and he steals a shirt press to make a bunch of steam so they can oh. all escape. Okay, now, yeah. <clears throat> one, uh-huh. if you are mugged, yes, this is not what you do. <laughs> if you are mugged, kids, <laughs> just um, give them what they want. Yeah. Because that's... <laughs> they could harm you. Good point. Yep. Give them um, Not saying that the associate pastors meant any harm to anyone. Right, of they were a little harsh with their language, but, mm-hmm. um, you know, if you're mugged, just give them what they want. Two, I was really troubled by this scene. Because Scooby goes in, and there is an exchange. There is a dialogue exchange when he goes into the laundry. (laughs) And it is literally stereotypical sounds that are just being made for Mandarin or Cantonese or whatever language they speak in this Chinatown. Um, He is just making stereotypical sounds of it with his Scooby voice. Do you remember when Rosie O'Donnell got in trouble a few years ago for imitating the Chinese language. Yes, it, it was kind of like that. Just, it was like that, yeah. Yeah, that made me uncomfortable. But then what really bothers me, well, that really bothers me, but what also bothers me is he borrowed a shirt press. They made it very clear. They said, oh, Scooby borrowed a shirt press. <gasps> That's not how you borrow, kid. So he borrowed it and created a smoke screen or a steam screen so they could escape. But then he left it there so they could escape. Now, if you borrow something... <laughs> And you use it to get away. You don't just leave it in the street. No, not usually. If I lend usually. you my copy of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, and I find it in the street, I'm going to be very upset. When, oh, you, man. when you borrow something, you are making yeah. an agreement. And I feel very passionately about this. If I lend you my car... Which I would never do, Scooby. But if I lend you my car and I find it abandoned in the street, gonna be a little upset. Hey, here's my Backstreet Boys CD from 1999. (laughs) Oh, where is it? Oh, it's in the street. In the street. Yeah, not okay with that. And this laundry press is their livelihood. Yes. Um, As is the Backstreet Boys album for me. It it sounds like perhaps you've been burnt before. Yes, I've I've lost so many books, countless books. <laughs> I love my books. Pe- 
people like to lend us things and I often just say no because I'm afraid of it entering the black hole of our world with two kids and two dogs and frankly Olaf and I being a little you know kid and dog like as well um Mm. and it's very likely that things could end in the street perhaps so yeah sorry Steven don't ever lend me your backstreet boys CD I will not I will not make that mistake okay not again millennium is too valuable (laughs) Okay, so then they go to A. Fong's Oriental Art Dealership. I, sure. I think it just says store. So again, you know, Oriental, like we talked about before. We'll, we'll let it go this time. This this decade, Scooby, beyond notice. Okay, um, so A. Fong explains, yeah, this was stolen years ago from a grave of a warlord. And now his ghost wants it back, and his associate pastors are his emissaries. Um, and they're like, wait, those pastors are emissaries of the living dead. So they're zombies. And Mr. Fong is like, yeah, totally. Sure. Consider them zombies. <laughs> or they're just pastors who want back the things that were stolen from the grave of their very important person. <sighs> okay. He says, I give you a friendly warning. If you keep this, you're in grave danger. Uh, Yeah. Take it back to the police right now and get out of this danger. But no. Okay. Daphne. I will say uh-huh. they were fairly respectful with this gentleman's accent. Yeah. In it was fairly accurate things. to like an immigrant accent and not like over the top and stereotypical. So I was kind of impressed. You know, throughout the whole episode, actually, I'll give it to them. Most of the accents weren't bad. As bad as they have been in other episodes. Steven's looking well, at me like, Julie, don't take that stance. Come on. Julie, we're going to get there. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Maybe I've forgotten something. Okay. so Daphne, I think you must have. Yeah, okay. It, it's not the mouse we're talking about, is it? Because the mouse was the most offensive thing to me. Oh, no. It's not the mouse. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. It's far more offensive <laughs> than the mouse. I just watched it this morning, but clearly I was uh, a little busy. Okay. So Daphne's like, they're not getting my mask. This is my Nazi gold. Um, so then Fred drives recklessly to escape the pastors. And here the song matches this scene a bit better. Do you remember the song? Um, Yeah, it was something like driving really fast and going up a hill. And here's <laughs> another hill. And this is clearly the same footage. Oh, a banana peel. Watch out for that. Like it was it was very much describing exactly what was happening. Um, <laughs> yeah. And it was also like. Watch for that banana peel, girl. I love you. I'll show you the way. And <laughs> I'm going to teach you how to drive this way. Oh, is that what it was? No, not at all. I just made that up. Okay. That, See? that was very good. Thank you. The two of us <coughs> together. This is this is what our show can become. Um, yes. No, it all... was just... I I have notes on the chase scene. Oh, yeah. Tell us about um, it. Um, So my first note is just driving. <laughs> and then my second note is... A lot of driving. Yeah, yep, uh-huh, yep. Um, Oh, no, dead end. I'm just going to read it like a poem. Um, I love it. Like a free verse poem. E.E. E. Cummings. They plow through a hotel, driving on rooftops like Batman in a tumbler. Scoop slides out of the back of the van. They must be in San Francisco's Chinatown. Fisherman's Wharf. A banana peel makes the van spin out into a pile of fish, which clearly causes them trouble. Yep, that's all I got. <laughs> In fact, that in my notes, I do good. need you to know, I wrote rut row, they got Daphne. <laughs> I, I liked it. I thought it was kind of like a series of haikus. It was very poetic. I, the meter was a little off, but other than that, I, I give it a solid B minus. It's spoken word. I say it however I want. Okay, fair. Um, is that how spoken word <laughs> works? You just claim it's spoken word and then no one can argue with it. Okay. You can change the meter in spoken word poetry. All right, fair. All I've right. done my share of spoken word. I know it. I bet you know way more than this stuff than I do. I'm totally making up things. It- <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. Okay. I'm playing with my sound cage. Very cool. All Guys, right. I'm still getting over the sickness. I'm- so, folks, you definitely need to check out social media to see some of the screen caps I took because in this one, all the kids are terrified during this chase scene, except for Fred, who looks so bored because he's like, hey, in order to feel anything, I have to see blood. I mean, he is not aroused at all. And by aroused, I mean, you know, like uh, autonomic arousal, you know, when your heart rate increases. Right. Yeah. He's, in um, a way. 
or in a sexual way. Either way, he's <coughs> not getting it. He's got this coolness about him. Like, have you? I don't. Have you watched Mindhunter? No, not yet. He's very much got this coolness about him, like the Ed Kemper. Oh. Just like I'm sure he's delivering lines in the van about what it's like to butcher people, <laughs> but he's he's very calmly doing it. And there is a part where you know the mystery machine flies through the air. It's pretty exciting. Because it's on rooftops, flying from rooftop to rooftop, which once again establishes best van ever. Although they might want to check out the suspension afterwards. Anyway. Yes, broken. All of it. Just, we're all, they broke everything. Yeah. We're definitely in concurrence about San Francisco. And I'm really disturbed about the banana peel sending the mystery machine in an all spin <sighs> out. But, uh, you know, bananas, I'm telling you, in Scooby-Verse are the gun in uh, Chekhov's gun. But that's what a banana is in this Uh-oh. universe. You see a banana, and it's like, <laughs> no, this is not going to go well. Okay. Daphne- I don't think that's how Chekhov's gun works. <laughs> <laughs> if you see a banana peel in the first act, it has to be slipped on in the third act. Exactly. You you know where I'm coming from here with that. So the it first works. through third acts all took place over the course of four <laughs> seconds. And the rest was just epilogue. Exactly. Thank you. I'm glad we're on the same page here. You totally got my awesome literary reference. Okay. So they take Daphne under citizen's arrest. The religious leaders are like, look, let's just peacefully help her get to a safe place where we can hold her until the constables can arrive. And uh, there was a bit of peacefully binding and gagging her. I'm not sure that was necessary. (laughs) Okay. Fair, fair, fair. But... Um, and they're definitely on their way to a safe place so that she can be taken care of by the authorities. What will happen? We'll find out after the commercial break. Hey, this is The Toe, host of the Gravity Beard Podcast, a variety show with interviews and discussions on a wide range of topics. Our guests have included a viral YouTube star, a former child actor. We've even had a guy on who may have solved the D.B. Cooper case. It's a delicious box of audio chocolate. You never know what you'll get. Find it on Podbean, iTunes, and other places you listen to podcasts. It's the Gravity Beard Podcast. It's what your ears will want to be listening to. I'm Wayne Pacelli, President of the Humane Society of the United States. As the nation's largest and most effective animal protection organization, HSUS is there for animals when hurricanes and other natural disasters strike. We're there raiding puppy mills, dog fighting rings, or stopping whale and baby seal hunts. We're there providing sanctuary to horses and exotic animals. We're there in the halls of Congress and state capitals, fighting for legislation to ban all forms of cruelty. We're there all across America and around the world, where other organizations won't be, can't be. We urge you to support our work so you too can be there in spirit and in celebration of the joys of the human-animal bond. Visit our website at humanesociety.org to join us in our effort to help all animals. <coughs> do you want to get water or, or anything? Or do no, you I'm just going to cough it out. Um. Okay. <laughs> oh, poor guy. Are, Aha, I've returned. Are oh, you God. one of those dudes who's like, I'm too manly for medicine? No, I just oh, don't take I don't take medicine. <laughs> okay, well, we are back. Feel free to keep all that in if you want. Sure. <laughs> back from commercial break. Velma finds a clue. Turns out she can read Chinese. As she doesn't state whether it's Mandarin or Cantonese, because apparently all Chinese is Chinese. Um but she can't read this clue and no one can figure out what it says until Scooby Doo realizes that it's backwards text. Because not only can this doggy read, <laughs> he can read better than all the humans around him, and he's amazing. Oh my <laughs> gosh! <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna make a confession. This Uh-oh. is about the point where, as I've mentioned in multiple episodes before, this is about the point where I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> <clears throat> So halfway through this episode, my brain just stopped working, and um, I need you to know what it was doing, though. Okay, okay. My sick brain was literally sitting on the couch, and while I was taking notes on Scooby-Doo, my notes about stop here. In fact, I'm not going to lie to you. My notes stop at they got Daphne. 
And as I was sitting there, that was the end. Yeah. Well, as I was sitting there staring at the screen, I realized I was absorbing nothing. And all I was doing was humming the office theme out loud, very loudly. Um, so I've been watching a lot of the office lately. Oh yeah. That's not a bad thing to binge on. Yeah, no, it it was time. It was time to watch it again for the umpteenth time through the series. But I just like, I don't know. I I was sitting there watching Scooby and the shenanigans just going like, and like, I was just, it was, it was bad. My dog was looking at me like I was crazy. Wow. When even ghost looks at you weird, you know? Yeah, he's like usually just ignores it. But. <laughs> so yeah, so this is all new to me except for one very distinct thing that happens. But I'm the gonna mouse. wait till we get there. Okay. No, well, I don't know if it involved the mouse. <laughs> it more involved something that made me literally stand up off my catch- couch and yell. Okay, I can't wait. Well, uh, then this will be like Julie telling a story to Stephen. And by the way, I love reruns I like too. I think there's something really comforting about that, and perhaps that's why I love Scooby Doo so much. Yes. And maybe why I'm a little excited for the other seasons i've never seen they won't be reruns they'll be just i'm excited runs. for that too but I'm, I'm also very excited for the next episode but we'll get to that later because i saw the title and i was like oh, it's that one yeah like I finally too okay awesome okay so they uh go to this temple which we saw in the opening scene because that's what the clue had said and they'd heard it's haunted because of course scooby world Okay, it's beautiful. Too bad people keep stealing from it. Um, anyway, uh, they break in, of course, because there's got to be a little bit of breaking and entering in every episode of scooby Uh And they stand in front of this holy shrine. And in front of this shrine with it, the huge Buddha-esque statue, they just stand there talking about how they're going to find their thief friend Daphne and how they've just broken in. So, you know, if someone stood in the sanctuary of my synagogue in front of the Torah, just talking about how they're going to rob the place, I would be really upset by the way. So don't do that folks. Don't do it. Don't, don't do rob it. anywhere, but no. specifically religious places. That's Thank you. It's no good. It's no good. So anyway, um, they split up. Of course. Uh, it does do you have your religious places in the past have a, a lot of security. No, God, no. Yeah, ours have to these days. It's kind of distressing. That's not very funny, though, so I won't get into it. Maybe. Well, that is that is sad. It is, but, you know. I mean, maybe. I used to have to have a swipe card to get into one that I worked at. Oh, well, that's security, but that's so nice. That it's not like an armed guard. We don't have armed guards either. We just, yeah, we, have, we now have like a swipe card, whereas it used to be, you know, homeless people could come in and use the bathroom and get food and stuff. And now we, we still do that, just in more secure ways, unfortunately. Oh, well, people, stop being violent towards churches and synagogues. Thank you yes, very please. much. Yes, please. <laughs> Not that it's our listener base. <laughs> no, yeah, it's it's the it's y'all out there, kids. Um, if you're listening, if you're within the sound of my voice, don't do anything to harm any sort of church or synagogue or temple or mosque or anything because or anywhere for that matter yeah, I mean, good because point. that makes you a garbage human being um, it's not and, like oh but schools are fine go ahead and take yeah it, take no it exactly no schools <laughs> my wife's a teacher like i and not that it would be okay if she wasn't but like just here's a good rule like yeah overall nobody hurt anyone ever that's um oh. that's a good rule i'm taking a hard stance meddling kids podcast no one hurt anyone ever. Um, that's going to be the new motto for Meddling Kids 2018. Yeah, 2018. the year we don't hurt people. Yeah, well, I think that should be every year. Um, but yeah, 2018, no. don't I hurt can't nobody. I promise forever. I'm, I'll, Actually, I'll make that, that deal negative. with you for 2018. I'm not going to do any harm. For 2019, okay, well, we'll get there. Don't harm people who are just trying to like live their life because if so we don't want you as a listener you get out of here (laughs) um you know it's almost like there should be a top 10 best rules for being a good human ever and that would be definitely like number three or four no rule number one (laughs) just don't be a douche i was making a 10 commandments joke but you're right don't be a douche would be (laughs) the modern version of steven's 10 commandments yeah (laughs) that's rule number one one. like just be a good person like don't come on people don't be a jerk nobody wants a jerk (laughs) oh my My gosh gosh i'm just Uh, why do i have to have this conversation with you kids (laughs) 
I huh. love it. There's all this great religious doctrine is coming out of this episode. This is incredible. Oh my gosh. And kind of offensive. Okay. So anyway, now the uh, rabbi is wearing a mask and watching them. He probably doesn't want to confront them because, you know, they're thieves and they're breaking and entering. He, I'm sure he's called the police and he's just standing back. Um, and a hole in the wall opens up and they see Daphne tied up, you know, where they're keeping her safe until the police can arrive in a nonviolent method. And um, she's going, get out of here. And Velma, super calm, says to Fred, I think she's trying to tell us something. Um, and then Vel- uh, Daphne removes her own gag and says, it's a trap. So she could have. Yeah. If she <laughs> just. All right. <laughs> Daphne. Anyway. Okay, we'll allow it. Okay, so now all of them are locked in in a nice, again, nonviolent way until the police can show up. Scooby and Shaggy, meanwhile, are off searching in a different space. And Scooby pretends he's a mouse because um, Shaggy's like, what are you, a man or a mouse or something like that? Um, And then they fall through some shenanigans in front of uh, the rabbi. And um, I know I was calling him a pastor before. Now he's a rabbi. It's just easier for me to remember. And I kind of like imagining my own rabbi in this role. So anyway, hey, Rabbi Seth. Okay, so... uh, (laughs) Um, I don't think he listens to this ridiculous show, but maybe he does. Um, he's also a really I hope good podcast. So. I hope so too. He has an amazing Hello, podcast. Rabbi Seth, if you're one of our listeners, I need to remind you of our 2018 rule. Just don't hurt anybody. Don't hurt anyone, Rabbi Seth. Um, he has a one minute podcast every week, 60 seconds on the Torah portion of the week. It's a modern perspective on it. It's called Torah, T-L-D-R. It's amazing for Jews and non-Jews. Anyone just like interested hmm. in religious texts. Really Again, cool. religious studies minor in college, so interesting. Yeah, and 60 seconds a week. It's good. Anyway. That's too much. I don't have that kind of time. <laughs> um, okay, so they are searching. Da, da, da. Oh, they get away, though, because Shaggy rides Scooby like a motorcycle. Check out social media for adorable pictures. Uh, the rabbi's like, you've angered the ghost. Now you've got to pay. Actually, it's more like this. You've angered the ghost. Now you shall pay. And I'm assuming he means retributions like legal fees and things like that um shaggy dares him to cross a line that shaggy has drawn with a stick in the ground do you remember any of this and uh yes i do remember that okay rabbi seth crosses the line um and then shaggy does it again rabbi seth crosses the line again i better warn rabbi seth that i've made our villain (laughs) his name (laughs) It just registered. I was literally looking something up on my phone for a second, and it just registered that you were referring to the villain as your own rabbi now. <laughs> anyway, um, Shaggy gives a really racist uh, warning. He says, I know judo, chop suey, and Chinese checkers. Um, oh, by the way, have you ever played Go, the Chinese board game from a long time ago? No. It's like the Chinese version of chess. It's super duper hard. My uh, Chinese American boyfriend in college tried to teach it to me unsuccessfully. Anyway, uh, the dude kept crossing the line, and then there's some more chasing, but still, like, nothing violent. Like, the rabbi's kind of like, hey, mayhem makers, come on, get out of my Chinese version of a synagogue. Okay, and then here's the part where I was like, okay, none of this religious stuff makes sense, because there's, like, a male Vishna statue. It has six arms, and it's sitting cross-legged, and it has a red mark on his forehead. Um, probably not. Um, well, it's Vishnu. Oh, um, okay. Probably not. You're maybe thinking of Krishna. Um, <gasps> but thank you. It's not. It's neither of them actually. Um, unless I I haven't yeah. I looked at it on the screen, but I don't have it like pulled up in front of me right now. Um, but. As far as I could tell, it was Kali. Oh, so it was like a legit um, actual individual. Yeah, because Kali is a lot of times represented as sitting and having six arms. Oh, and is um, it, is he male? Uh, no, Kali is a goddess. Okay. Yeah, and, um, and this statue is definitely male. Oh, was it? I, I don't know. I couldn't see genitals. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, because Kali is usually it was represented. It chested and looked male chested. Oh, okay, bare chested. See, I don't know. I was gonna say because Kali is um, 
usually represented as like a destroyer of evil forces like it's the destroyer goddess oh okay and well so i mean that's what i was saying they were like, messing up everything i mean right obviously she's like a divine mean. protector but sometimes i mean representations of kali are done without breasts okay so, if so i'm trying are, to think so of like the, the nicest Scooby way to like <laughs> like have this conversation but i'm like <laughs> with being family friendly but like kali is not always um anatomically correct oh, okay. um in drawings a lot of times because if i noticed correctly um the statue had like necklaces and things and a lot of times kali will have necklaces um hanging around and so it, it doesn't appear that she has breasts and sometimes at least from what i remember of my studies i could be wrong remember i'm not a professional in this oh, okay, um, I'll remember but that. Of what I remember is, like, sometimes um, the main goddesses and gods are kind of represented androgynously. Oh, fascinating. Um, Not always, but, like, Vishnu um, can take the form of male or female, um, depending on a situation. Vishnu is, like, one of the main three. um, Oh, that is so Because it's Vishnu, Shakti, and Shiva. But then Kali, I think, is a form of – I could be completely wrong on this – I want to say Kali is a form of Shiva, but yeah. Does it make sense if it is Kali for Kali to be in a somewhat Buddhist temple? No. All right. (laughs) It makes no sense at all um, for a Hindu goddess to be in a Buddhist temple. I didn't know Um, if, you know, maybe (laughs) there was some like crossover tour or something. There may be some sort of crossover sect of both religions um, like, that I'm unaware of. I mean, that does happen. Like when Billy Joel tours with um, that guy who was in the Beatles, George Harrison. Paul McCartney? George, well, George Harrison's been dead for many, many <laughs> years, Julie. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Are you talking about Paul McCartney? Maybe. That sounds right. <laughs> George Harrison's been dead for like 10 or 15 years now. So he also would not be in a Buddhist temple. Thank you and for proving Well, he point. actually probably would have during oh, his life. Okay. okay, that's true. <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> he was more into Hindu uh, stuff, though, traditions. And he, maybe he brought a Kali statue with him. Well, anyway, it gets smashed. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really disrespectful and terrible. <laughs> Thank you. That's what I'm saying. Um, okay, so then I have in all caps, oh, no, gets bad. Scooby and Shaggy pretend to have a restaurant. Is this the thing that right. made you jump up? Why don't you tell us about it? This is it? when I literally <laughs> stood up because I, I saw that the door was closed. Mm-hmm. And I heard that they were doing accents. Yeah. And I stood up and I said, don't you do it. <laughs> don't you work? do it. Did it work? It didn't You're... work because oh. the door swung open uh-huh. and they were dressed extremely stereotypically. It's essentially... Do you remember the insanely, insanely racist um, portrayal of a Asian or an Asian character that Mickey Rooney used to do? No. In the 1930s and 40s? Okay, he would like big glasses, like oh, no. buck teeth, like the stuff you saw in the caricatures during World War II, like oh. that was what he was oh. portraying. Oh. And it felt like that. Yeah. Like they had their teeth kind of jutted out and I was like, oh my God, like this is... I know this is 1969, I think, by this point, but this is 1969. Like, have we not come far enough by then? To Which I guess the answer is no. I guess not. Um, it doesn't feel like it's that long ago. But Unless it was just it was like... a hilarious, ironic, like, South Park-esque, hey, we're making fun of racism. Somehow I don't yeah, think I that they I'm were just, that meta. No, definitely not. I'm um, South Park was kind of the first show to be that meta. Yeah. South Park or the – well, the Simpsons. The Rugrats. Ru- and the Rugrats. Thank you. <laughs> that is a good oh. show, by the way. I would love to <laughs> do a Rugrats recap at some point. Oh, God. We're, I'm going to have a fifth <laughs> podcast. It's going to be the Rugrats recap. We'll have to call it uh, Pod something rats. with Dipey. Um, they no. What did they? I don't know. Anyway. Stephen's going through a Rugrats black hole right now. Yeah, oh, I'm just I'm so going back in a. Do, 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 do. The music is great too. Okay, well, while Stephen's, I could tell Stephen's thinking really hard because he's looking up at the ceiling. <laughs> this uh, is the last episode of Meddling Kids. Everybody's already clicked <laughs> off. They're like, "What is happening to this podcast?" 
So uh, in their fake Chinese restaurant, it's one of those, it would be a funny scene if it wasn't racist. They, um, <laughs> you know, if it wasn't all racist and horrible, it would be pretty great. Um, they trick the bad guys into sitting down at a table, but they tie the tablecloths around the bad guy's necks. I mean, the system, oh, maybe it's like when missionaries come to my house and they're really hungry and I feed them before they go on their way after I tell them I'm not interested in their gospel. Um, anyway. <laughs> That happens to me about once a week. I think I'm on a list now of Jews who always have fresh cookies around. Um, I mean, you know, that, I I want to come and just like pretend. Yeah, just come like, on Julie, by. Julie, can I? Even Actually, like, I feel like at this point I could just come by and be like, Julie, give me cookies. It, it would happen. Believe me. Right now we have oatmeal scotchies thanks to uh, the um, ITA. Is this adulting besties? Someone gave me a good recipe. Anyway. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, they try to feed them chocolate chop suey and liver a la mode, uh, and the soup lands on their heads, not Scooby and Shaggy, but on these poor associate pastors who are probably very hungry because, you know, they've been running around all day. Uh, the others are still locked in, but Scooby and Shaggy run into a gong, which is very loud, by the way, if that ever happens to you. And now they're tied up on top of some fireworks. And I'm thinking, okay, that's not very nice. That's like the first thing these religious folks have done that's not excellent. Um, Except for kidnapping. Again, citizens arrest. Totally a thing. Bound and gagged. Okay, fair. Um, but bound, see, the thing yes. is, I love these guys. You have to understand, <laughs> the associate pastors might be my favorite characters on the Scooby-Doo series so far. I love um, them. Because they look awesome. Yeah, they are pretty it's, awesome. It's literally based on nothing else but the outfits. Like, they look <laughs> kind of like Moon Knight from Marvel Comics, like, but with really cool mask. I don't know. I really like it. <laughs> okay, but fortunately, uh, Scooby and Shaggy put out the fuse with their tushies, and then they crash into the chamber where the others are, and they're all free. Shaggy wants to leave, which is the right thing to do, Shag, but the others want to continue destroying the temple. So, um... They go around searching for more clues and just, you know, generally raising havoc. And they find carrier pigeons who have messages. Um, and this is where the whole episode kind of falls apart. So Fred wants to set a trap involving the gong, a mouse trap, a match, sandpaper, and Shaggy's train set, which fortunately he has with him. So Scooby is laying down track and they use all the uh, do you remember how the trap works i can try to describe it uh 110 percent no okay so the gong <laughs> is on top of something with wheels oh maybe the, on top of the train and there's fireworks under there too to set it off and there's match in a sand oh when the mouse trap sets off the match against the sandpaper it lights and starts a fuse the fireworks set off the train, and the gong goes along the train track into the carrier pigeon nest thing, so that the bad guy will get, so that the poor rabbi will get locked in there with all the carrier pigeons. This doesn't really work very well. Not surprisingly, it sort of works, except that Scooby also gets caught with the rabbi, and then the associate pastors um, or assistant rabbis get caught up too, and. Um, Everyone falls out a window into a big blanket tied to a tree. Somehow it might be somebody's cape or cloak or I don't know. It's really confusing. But they're all caught, including Scooby, and Scooby's holding the mask. The Doesn't that all make sense? You look confused. I don't understand how you possibly could be confused. I don't. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, me neither. So let's move on. Uh, <laughs> okay. And, okay. Um, and the next scene shows Lieutenant Lou and Daphne explaining it all. And Lieutenant Lou is another really good character here. I like that he is Asian American. They didn't just have like some white cop come in and fix everything. You know, he's clearly like community policing here. It's nice. He's a member of the community and he doesn't have a horrible accent and he's pretty with it and and also kind of hot, too, if I might say. All uh, right. Calm down. <laughs> Keep in your pants, Julie. Okay. Anyway, they explain it all. It's actually a really, really, really overly complicated plot. Um, this mask includes clues about monthly shipments for smugglers. If you press on the ruby, the mouth opens and a recording comes out explaining where the smuggled goods are and where they go. <laughs> Isn't that easy to understand and totally makes uh -huh. sense? Yeah. 
So there's only one Scooby snack that Velma's got to congratulate Scooby and Shaggy. And she tosses it in the air for them to fight over aggressively. But it falls on the ground and a mouse, you know how oftentimes in these episodes there's adorable mouses who come out and shake their angry paws. Mice. Uh huh. I knew Some that might one. call them mice. <laughs> Some might. And I got there eventually. Thank you very much. And the mouse comes out and he's got um, slanted eyes. Oh, I didn't even. Oh. Yeah. Maybe it was my imagination. Maybe I was just like primed to see racism everywhere. Could be totally my imagination. But I think they drew even the mouse as stereotypical cartoonish Asian American. Um, and the mouse takes the cookie and eats it. So good for you, mouse. No. So yeah, but um, other than that, it was a pretty great episode. I mean, I like the rabbis and stuff. That's the first time I've seen rabbis in a cartoon like this. <laughs> yes so, there was that S- rabbis and associate pastors and uh, presumably lieutenant lou seems like a pretty cool guy so hopefully he took... you, mm. <laughs> Do you I, I need like a spray bottle hey i'm not just saying because he's like delicious tall drink of water i'm just saying because he seems like a fair police officer and very hot who would take the mask and figure out legally how to get it back to the temple where it belongs and also how daphne can be reimbursed for the money she paid now julie i feel like we've had to have this conversation way too many times but cartoon character yeah uh he's he's a cartoon character yes yeah not a real (laughs) not a real boy cartoon character okay um, I, I hear you loud and clear fine 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 just hey, saying I just, I, hey, hey you saw who framed roger rabbit right and yes. did you have any strong feelings about jessica rabbit i rest my case i i did not what i was like two when that came out i was <laughs> when i saw it I was little um <laughs> you just thought hmm i'm hungry for milk no no <laughs> No, oh, if I there. ever had feelings for a cartoon character, it was freaking, um, oh, what's her name? From Space Jam. Space Jam. Yeah. No, I was just going to go there, too. Okay, I, not I that wanted I to th- say Jessica Rabbit, but it's no, not no, Jessica it's Rabbit. Not. I it's don't remember like, her name either, but yeah, she does It's she not does Babs. It. Something like that. Okay, yeah, not that I've thought about that extensively. So Is um, it Babs Bunny? <laughs> Hey, while you're on Google, maybe you can help us out with our meddling question of the week, which is from me, which is, hey, if there was a luchador episode, what what would their names be and who would be the luchaderos? Luchaderos. No, that's probably not a world R. It was it was Babs Bunny, <laughs> by the way. Um, yeah, just I'll give so her you a know. rolling R. All right. Okay. Luchador. Uh... <laughs> Because I Let's would see. obviously want to see Scooby as a luchador. Obviously. Clearly. But although Fred would be the deadliest, I also think Velma could be pretty amazing. Because I get the sense she's one of those women who may be a little uptight, but come Halloween time or when she's able to cosplay or, you know, get dressed up and, and let her hair down and still wear her glasses because we don't want her insane. She's can play in that space so i, I think she right. probably and i think she food. could have like a darkness to she, she so she'd be like a sexy star yeah maybe or maybe just like, like super fierce okay. <laughs> by the way everyone i'm a nerd and sexy star is an actual female luchadora oh. um <laughs> oh, <you were. laughs> okay <laughs> yeah no sexy star is not just me being weird no sexy star is like a female luchadora yeah yeah so there's a mailman at the door or something so oh if you're no wondering why everyone's barking I don't need to go they're, or anything. Just... They're so aggressive. Yep. It, it works. Be nice. They bark really loud, and then the mailman always goes away. So clearly it works. I'm going to send you a link to an image of Sexy Star and tell me if you can see Velma in this role. Okay. Um, also, I do not like the name of the website where this link oh, is no, from. Oh, no. I'm very It's nervous. not in a per- – well, it's not like – not suitable for work it's just a curse word and i don't know if it's like disrespectful oh. or no, I like, like it. used in an empowering way Whoa. i don't know what this website is oh my gosh i had no idea there were very exciting looking luchadoras like this right mm-hmm. so like i need I'm, to I'm... get into wrestling <laughs> see and i'm okay with it because they're real people okay so it's okay for me to objectify real live people and not cartoons 
I'm not saying objectify them. I'm just I saying. Am. Hey. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh um, god. Um. Yeah. No. Scooby's got to be a luchador. I'm down with Velma. Shaggy's yeah. a little lanky. Yeah. Um, I don't think he had the build for it. Daphne is too hopped up on Percocet, <laughs> and um. Fred, and Fred would be too deadly. He wouldn't yeah. follow the rules. Yeah. Fred would put them in some sort of chokehold oh. or do a literal pile driver on them because, okay, I'm going to, breaking news, everyone. Um, wrestling's not real. Um, professional wrestling is, is scripted like a soap opera. Or like a cartoon? Um, yes, we're like a cartoon. It is scripted. <laughs> They're all basically just superheroes. It is a soap opera drama, but the stuff they do in the ring is stage fighting the same way people fight um, in like Broadway shows and stuff like that. So you have to be really careful in the way you do things. Like a pile driver, when you drop somebody on their head, um, you use your knees as a cushion so it looks like their head hits the mat, but your knees hit the mat and their head is cushioned in your knee. And Fred could have, what's that called? Like that fighting rage that, you know, people have sometimes when they're in the midst of battle. and Like just they see red? Yeah, and and not know when to stop. I don't think he would even. I think he constantly sees red. Oh, poor Fred. He needs red some Fred. help. He, uh, Daphne needs to share her good good drugs with him. I mean, bad bad <laughs> drugs. Drugs are bad. Well, if they're uh, prescriptions, she shouldn't su- share them with him because that's illegal. Good point. Okay, if you have a meddling question or just want to let us know what you love about Scooby or your thoughts on luchadors or religious leaders in cartoons or Jessica Rabbit, email us at, or if you want to send me pictures of Jessica Rabbit, totally fine with that, email us at meddlingkidspod at gmail.com, or you can tweet at us at meddlingkidspod, or best of all, join us on Facebook. We have, you know, our show has a page, but we have a really fun discussion group too. And thank you so much to Tiff, as always, who is our phenomenal moderatress. That's Mod- I'm moderatress? Sh- I don't know. Moderator. I, I was, yeah. Mod. She's, a moder- she's our mod extraordinaire. She's really phenomenal. I'm going to come up with a great term for it. Thank you, Tiff. You are the best. She, she really is. And very funny and wonderful person, too. Cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, with that, I think. I think that's it. Um, thanks for joining us on the Meddling Kids podcast. You're welcome. Um, we, yep. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> well, we haven't like hung out in like a month. I the know. last time I saw you, we were in person in DC. It was awesome. It was. Guys, Julie is just as nice in person <laughs> as she seems on this show. She is literally the exact same person. <laughs> it's and so funny it is that, wonderful. That's how you and Chris were, too. It was such a relief. You know, it was like immediately like, oh, hey. Steven, yeah, what's up? And yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was instantly like, oh, hello, person that I know very, very well, but have never actually met. <laughs> it was great. Um, it was wonderful. We sat through some interesting presentations. Anyway, yeah, um, yeah we want to say thanks to Dave Seste for the use of the song Night Surfing as our theme music. Thanks for checking out our other shows. So Steven does Is This Adulting with the Fabulous Chris. It is a good look at mental health and all the fun things in life, too. Uh, It definitely is a show that gets all of us through hard times. So check it out. It's a fantastic show. My brother and I do the Station Wagon podcast. For some reason, our most recent episode on letter writing is so far our most successful episode ever. I don't know why, but people are really digging it. So check it out. It's good. Um, and next time we talk or in a few episodes, I'll be able to announce some new podcasts I'm working on, or you can message me if you want to be one of our first listeners. Um, we'll be back next time. I know you're kind of excited about this Scooby's night with a frozen delight in which he gets to have a romantic getaway with Olaf the snowman. Oh, God, I hope that's what it is. If it's not what that is, I'm going to be very upset and I may leave the show. What, What did you think? Is that what you were hoping for? Anytime I hear the word frozen, uh-huh. um, I, I do associate it with the movie. Um, if Sven is not in there somewhere, oh, I'm going Sven. to be very upset. Also, I want to issue an apology to listener Matt, who uh-huh. is constantly watching Frozen with his children. <laughs> um, very, very sorry that we are even discussing Frozen <laughs> in your presence. Um, I know that it's hard for you. Um, we should have given some sort of warning. That we were uh, about to discuss Frozen. Trigger alert! Hey Matt, you should if you haven't seen it yet, go watch out. Go watch the YouTube video of unnecessary censorship of Frozen. 
Oh, it's so good. It's so good. And right. it, y'all, the rest of y'all too. It's a, it's a good video. Maybe no, don't show it to the kids. Although there's literally no curse words in it. It's still naughty. Okay. In the meantime, please rate us and subscribe on iTunes or wherever you get podcasts. Oh, oh, like uh, Scrabble Champ 4 did. Uh, this person wrote, hilarious, irreverent take on Scooby-Doo. Five stars. Love listening to Stephen and Julie. They bring back all the old feelings I have about Scooby-Doo and make me laugh with their funny theories. Thanks, Scrabble Champ 4. I like to think of us as irreverent. Yeah, That's, but today um... we were quite reverent. Ah, ha, 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 yeah. ha. And I don't think you at any point in today's episode said Fred was horny for something. So I think we're doing all right. <laughs> Yeah, Justin. Now I'm going. Justin McElroy would love this show. <laughs> I, I hope he's out there listening. Probably. Justin Horny for this one. Um. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna head out for the week. Um. I've got a 12-hour recording session that I got to do tomorrow, guys. So I'm gonna have to um. I'm gonna have to leave some of my watching duties up to Julie. Been sick, but while we were in D.C., I got surveillance clearance. <laughs> While we were there, it was great. Um, it was given to me by a Lyft driver. I don't know how official it is, but I was given surveillance codes and some of them seemed to work. And so had a high fever, laid on my couch, watched TV, bunch of you were on there, saw what you did. This all could be a fever dream. Maybe none of it happened, but I do believe that at least in my dreams, you would have gotten away with it if it weren't for us Memphis kids. Beware of the chocolate No, no, I'm not. I take it back. 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 You said you would. I know I did. I take it back. No backsies. We'll see how people respond. No backsies. Oh, God. Okay. Okay, thanks, Olaf, for helping us out here. The question is, imagine that some property has been stolen. It's actually a grave robbery and an important... Uh, item that was left in the grave was stolen and then it was sold to an art dealer and someone else or a curio shop forgive me and someone else purchased the item who does it belong to well it still belongs to the grave i think because they could go and um and get it back whoever owned that grave i think you could sue the person who stole the piece uh, especially if you were the eventual owner, but I think it has to go back to the first owner. So you hemmed and hawed and said, um, so were you lying then or are you lying now? <laughs> I, <laughs> I was, I was lying then. Also, <laughs> also, I think this all depends on what jurisdiction you're in. As we all know, the kids don't live any particular place. This could be an alternate reality or a, another solar system. 